Hi, my name's Hannah. Welcome to my channel. This is my friend Louis. Hello. And we are going to talk about stuff today. Mm -hmm. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> um, well, we're going to talk about something that has affected both of us, uh, and that is going back to university after doing our initial degrees as mature students, although I hate that word, not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. I'm not old, not yet. Question. Question number one. Question number one. Why? <laughs> Louis, why did you decide to come back to university as a mature student? Well, I was, well, I had a job. I was working in sports nutrition and I'd been working there for about three years. I was really enjoying it, mm -hmm. uh, but I felt that it wasn't my, my passion. The thing that I really wanted to kind of commit my energy to. I mean, it was it was good. I wanted a I wanted a a job or something something to do. I wanted a job where I could combine my academic interests mm -hmm. with my day to day activities. So um, I knew that I couldn't get a job in linguistics, which is what I study, um, without having at least a master's degree. So I thought, well, this is going to be my first step. I'm going to go back to university, get my master's degree, and then see where that takes me. I am returning because it's taken, uh, yeah, it's a difficult one to answer. Why am I returning? I'm returning to try and pursue a passion that I've had from a young age. Um, that I wrote off pretty much every level of my academic life and then my working life. Not strictly true. Um, but since I graduated, it's something I couldn't get out of my head. Mm -hmm. And there was no way I could avoid not coming back to university. Because I want to be a physicist. <laughs> I think the gap is ultimately irrelevant how long it's been since you know you finished your undergraduate degree because there are so many skills that you acquire in the meantime that you don't get at university and that are needed to oh, first and foremost motivate you and those motivating capabilities that you have to push yourself through uh, this experience again in yeah. your case or an advancement of the previous experience that of my bachelor's degree. The biggest obstacle, never mind the biggest fear, was how the, how the hell do you pay for a second degree? Um, was I good enough? Mm -hmm. um, probably being, uh, and this is where the mature student word comes in, being older than everybody else and having experienced it before, would I be able to fit in with my group, or my year group? That's probably the biggest one. And maybe even relationships with lecturers how would they treat you and how would you be able to speak to them because first time around you might have had a different experience but a lot of our lecturers to me felt like they were so much more mature and accomplished <laughs> yeah. whereas now they're just people who have jobs yeah. who are very smart but I think I was still quite worried about I guess whether I'd be able to make friends and I knew that I wasn't going to be going out on the town like first time around <laughs> <laughs> That's that's not my life now, but you have a daily interaction. <laughs> you have a daily interaction with these people, just as you do in a work environment with your colleagues, and you end up making quite good friends with your colleagues at work, and you do go to the pub and socialise. My friendship group is based around a couple of mature students and a couple of studious 17, 18 year olds. <laughs> so we go to the library and we study or we go to house parties on a Friday night because that's a reasonable time to go out. Which is what you signed up for. Which is what I, yeah. You wanted to study. I uh, wanted you didn't, to study. You didn't want to become an undergraduate again. No. Right. No, because then that's the question that you ask yourself is if I could do it all again, yeah. you would study harder but you'd probably also party harder, potentially. Oh, I was reading but something somewhere, it was, it was, um, Sleep more than you study. Yeah. Study more than you party. Yeah. But party as hard as you can. Ooh. Um, what about you fitting in? Because you work in an office that's mostly PhD students, am I right? Because I'm doing a master's by research, it's slightly different to a taught master's, which is more of a. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where was I 
for saying. Yeah, um, for me, because I am a, a research master's, which is slightly different to a, a taught master's, with, which I suppose is more like undergraduate 2.0. So the work is obviously is a similar standard to, it's a master's standard, but yet it's more structured. So um, my work environment is very much like that of an office. Yeah. We're all there, we've all got our computers, <clears throat> working on our on our papers or research yeah and um, it's a very good environment I didn't I didn't know what it was going to be like at first because um, as an undergraduate you have you go to classes you socialize with the people in your classes or the people that are on your course and friends thereof mm -hmm. um, but at the University of Nottingham, there are lots of research offices. So, for because I'm in the, the School of Cultures, Languages, and Area Studies, there are um, two big offices. Depending on well, there are two big offices that you can you can choose to, to work at, and the the one that uh, I work in is mostly kind of language students. Uh, so, there's always a, a shared bond. There's always an, uh, an ear someone's willing to, to listen or to help out or to suggest uh, some more research and, and it's a very very supportive collaborative atmosphere and because my supervisors were were quite supportive then I felt that I could go into that office environment and yes I'd be a complete so they gave newbie. You the confidence. Yeah, which is based on my own underlying confidence in I've chosen this topic, I want to be a specialist in this topic, no one else in this office knows about my topic, but they know about everything else that surrounds my topic. So it, it, it's great to always say, oh, do you mind just helping me out here, or oh, can you suggest someone, or, or vice versa. We've both left careers. Mm -hmm. Mine was definitely not very established. Yours was quite established. Mm -hmm. um, what risk did that carry to you? And you know, what sort of opinion did your family have of you sort of leaving a, a career? Well, first of all, my boss was very supportive. Um, he completely understood that you know I wanted to follow my, my mm -hmm. passion of, of sociolinguistics online. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just rolls off the tongue so easily. Um, and, you know, obviously uh, upset that, you know, a key member of his workforce uh, was leaving. My family were, were very supportive, they, you know, <laughs> especially when they found out that um, I could qualify for a grant. And then they're like, okay, well then, you know, isn't, you're not going to be bankrolled by <laughs> the bank of mum and dad. Um, Sorry, mum and dad. Unlike my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel like you were taking a step back or a step sideways or a step forward or nothing? And it didn't really compare to any sort of career path? I mean, I was sideways, a sideways step. Um, but for long term gain. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I feel similarly. Definitely. I'd say mine is probably one step back, two steps forward kind of thing. Okay. Because I'm starting from, not only did I finish a degree, but I'm starting from a year zero instead of a year yeah. one. Yeah. So the risks, because I don't have the right A-levels to study physics, so the risks were quite high and I don't get a grant and I don't get support. Mm. Um, but Apart from mental support from your friends. My friends and family and have family. been very supportive. <laughs> I think, although there will be four years where I might not have much money at all, if I then went straight into graduate employment, I'd probably be earning much more than I ever would have earned in the previous career I had. So I think the risks are worth it. Uh, next question. Um, what were your first day worries, Hannah? And I was expecting that you would say that you you enter a classroom or and a lecture all hall. 16. They're all there, and you're there with like your mm. your a groovy chick pencil case, still from 1998. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fabulous, fabulous reference. 
<laughs> okay, well, in that respect, yes, I, there is a distinct lecture, or th there is a lecture I distinctly remember where I felt like I was in sixth form. Um, and I actually haven't been to sixth form because I went to college in South Africa and stuff. But I felt like I felt like I was in a high school classroom. When you go back to your days at university, when you're sat in a seminar in first year, and the lecturer asks a question and no one says anything, <laughs> mm -hmm. it just felt like getting blood out of a stone with all of these newbies. And I was one of them. But yeah, that was that was first day fears. And well, they they were there. But by the end of the day. I'd already made friends. I mean, completely different experience to me. <laughs> I walked into an office environment, uh, but with my, my well, yeah, with my briefcase. No. Um, I suppose my fears were like, oh, where am I going to sit? Is there pol are there politics? Uh, basically, um, new job fears. Yeah, it was it was definitely akin to starting a new job. Am I going to fit in? Am I going to like people? Or are they going to like me? Um, but. I mean, that quickly went. Everyone was really nice. Um, how did you find adapting to university life again? Well, um, it's quite easy to adapt yourself to lying in every morning. No, no, no. <laughs> um, I find that starting a postgraduate degree after having worked for three years is great because you've already got that body clock and work ethic drilled into you um, which you need to succeed uh, as, a, as a postgraduate um, you know I, I get up in the morning at the same time I used to get up for work I'm in the office by nine o'clock most days I'm working until you know five or later if needs must mm -hmm. uh, everyone else is doing the same thing um, you, you, you've trained yourself to put in the effort and the difference is that you're doing something that you really 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 want to do so you want I, to be there exactly I don't I don't begrudge have it keeping office hours yeah yeah how does that differ to being an undergraduate again well completely different because I am in university nine to five and first time around I was not because I had did a humanities degree. Oh uh, yeah, oh uh, yes. So I've gone from having twelve hours of, of well, twelve hours of contact time um, to having twenty seven hours of contact time. And I have a ten hour part time job. You I envy your nine to five lifestyle a little bit because you can contain it and sometimes you do work late and when deadlines are there you are in at the weekend like me. But the rest of the time I feel like I'm I'm working 50 hour weeks at the moment. But mm. I, I've been told that in first year it will sort of peter out a bit. Because that was, a, that was a, a preconception and perhaps a misconception, or maybe it is possible, that this time around I'd be able to fit my undergraduate degree into a nice 9 to 5 slot, including doing all of my revision and writing up notes and doing questions, and then I would it would be in a nice little nine to five box. Yeah, well, next question, kind of following on from what we were discussing, what what are your biggest differences this time around versus the first time around? Like what do I notice that is different? Yeah, what's, I suppose what's markedly different for you mm -hmm. in your experience, second time at university, but also what's changed because it's the same university for both of us. Mm, we are back true. at the same university. Yeah. Weirdly, there's, I tell you what mate, there's a lot less Jack Wills, <laughs> okay, Jack Wills and Ugg Boots and Gilets were a thing in 2009 when I first started. Everyone's like wearing Adidas tracksuit tops or sweatshirts or... Matching tracksuits. Talking about wavy garms, I mean... What's that, sorry? You know, cool clothes, I believe. So, there's a whole new set of slang, they, they're talking about the sesh, they're not talking about lash it or like pre-lash or post-lash anymore they they're, talking about, they're like oh i'm all about the sesh i mean it's still the same chunder graduate <laughs> great words <laughs> but but even so i don't think i think the whole lad culture that was so prevalent when we were so so prevalent with the whole initiation kind of banter over the top giving each other silly nicknames and you know making each other 
down pints of various bodily fluids and <laughs> or alcoholic mixtures I feel has uh, is not as as prevalent like the culture has has changed somewhat. Do you think that's because you're not part of that culture now? Not that you were a lad. No, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying that. I was not I was not part of that. But because we I was part of the football team, mm -hmm. and the ladies' football team are, uh, were quite laddy. I can't tell now because I'm not part of it. Mm. Do you think it's because we're outside? Yeah, yeah. We that's don't. True. I, I think the biggest difference is that you can no longer bond over childhood TV. I think that's. Kind oh. of, I think that that's the main difference. Returning back, you the people in your peer group, what did I say you'll something? have different different experiences, and you can't. You know, their their first Pokemon game is different to your first Pokemon game. You know, so. I think I mentioned Timmy Mallet to someone the other day. <laughs> what eighteen year old has heard of Timmy Mallet? <laughs> uh, final question. Um, now that you've started uh, your new degree afresh, um, how? How has it now affected your short-term plans, and then how have those short-term plans uh, been affecting your your long-term plans for the future? Well, I think probably the first short-term plan or result of of six months in is that I can do this. I have uh, a semester's worth of grades that back up my hopes that I can do it. That fear has dissipated now. I I can keep going forward because there was such a big gap from GCSE to this point mm. and I've climbed that so far. It's definitely the right path. Uh, I'm in love with it more than I was the idea of it so that's nice. That is that's biggest benefit right there. Definitely. Um, I, because I'm a mature student or because I've got the experience I have and because I feel like I've delayed my start somewhat I'm trying my hardest to get as much experience as possible so that if I decide to leave after undergrad or progress to PhD that I can kind of hit the ground running with with good relevant experience and having the confidence to ask for stuff such as I have an internship in, in April for four weeks with one of the professors at the university that I'll be vlogging about and there's a little bit of me that thinks well I'm on year zero why am I going to be on an internship when there's going to be third years doing something similar in the summer, am I good enough? But I've just got to keep riding through that. So sh short term, it the future looks bright. Mm -hmm. I could eventually go to Sweden or the Netherlands, we'll see what happens with that. Um, long term, long term it could go, it could go many ways, but I'm trying to keep my options open. I could yeah. go, I'd like to go into science communication, I'd like to go and research that would probably mean a PhD, or I'm not writing off working in industry. Or a combination of yeah. some of them. So exciting and more visceral than it was six months ago. How about you? Um, well, as with you, I have enjoyed it a lot more. Than I thought yeah. thought I would be enjoying it. I love getting stuck into um, my academic work, and mainly because everyone's like, "What? What actually are you doing? Do you just spend all your time looking at Facebook <coughs> in you German?" Do. So, which is true. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, I can form a career out of that. No, um, but in terms of how that feeds into any long long-term plans. Um, with a master's it means that I can get a job in Germany uh, at, a, at a high enough level um, because they need, they a lot of these things demand a minimum of having a master's degree. Um, but also I've applied for a PhD here at the University of Nottingham so I'm just waiting to see if I um, get the funding um, for that so fingers crossed. Um, because, you know, with a doctor before my name, that <laughs> unlocks a, you know, <laughs> just won't be able to fit through doors anymore. Uh, <laughs> Still already. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, but keeping options open. Uh, keep, you know, I think coming back to university has allowed me to completely reorganise and review how I want my life or what 
path I want my life to take. What does your ideal job look like at the moment? You must have thought a little bit about ideal career. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I very enjoy, um, very much enjoy uh, teaching, um, but jobs in academia are not exactly common. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's that's one option. Yep. Um, also, a lot of what I do um, can definitely be applied in educational policy mm -hmm. and government social policy. Mm -hmm. um, so a job in this country or in a German-speaking country um, doing something like that mm -hmm. uh, would also be pretty good. Or both. Or both, or if I could split my time between England and Ideal Germany job. slash Austria slash German speaking Switzerland. Actually, no, maybe not Switzerland. Um, what have you got against Switzerland? I can't understand them. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be, you know, that would be even better. It's the start of quite an exciting journey, and it's only the very very beginning. Yeah. But it's it looks like it's going to be incredibly interesting uh, and the same for you I think definitely I can't wait to just keep on doing what I'm doing at the moment it will be very interesting to look back on this video in five years time yeah <laughs> um, well thank you Louis for thank taking you. your time out from your very busy day thank you for having me to be here even mm -hmm. though you live in this house yeah and if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask me or Louis then comment below um, if you liked the video then give it a thumbs up and if you like this stuff that we're making, that I've been making, then subscribe somewhere over here. Yeah, down below. Woo! And that's all. So we're going to go now. I'm going to go and eat pizza and drink cocktails. Okay, bye! Bye! Woo!